Hey guys, Sarah here with Room for Tuesday. Last week on Instagram, I asked you to send me all of your questions about anything, renovating, design, life, blog, whatever. So you sent them and I'm going to try to answer as many as I can in this short video. So here we go. First up, do you both work full-time jobs or do you do renovations full-time? I assume you're talking about Emma and myself and we both have full-time jobs. I work on the blog and interior design full-time and Emmett has an accounting job at a local cabinetry company full-time. So we're typically doing renovations on weekends or after 6 p.m. What serum or mascara do you use to make your eyelashes so long? This always, I get this question a lot and honestly, I'm super allergic to mascara. So I started getting lash, natural lash extensions about two years ago. And it really is so nice to not have to wear makeup or just to wake up and feel like you don't have to do anything. So I would highly recommend. Um, can you paint a basement a dark color or will it feel super small? You can definitely paint a basement a dark color. In fact, our previous bathroom, I painted the ceiling black to trick the eye into making you think that the ceiling height was actually taller than it is. So the same concept applies to a basement. Actually, by painting it dark, you can even trick the eye into thinking the space extends or is larger or higher ceilings, things like that. So dark colors actually work well in a basement. I cannot wait to see your plan to transform those doorways. Oh, you and me both. The doorways in our current home are pretty terrible and dated. They look very 90s and I cannot wait to see them go. Who knows when that will happen though because we have lots of projects on the roster before that. But um, I'd like to see them maybe arched or you can kind of see over here, this one. They definitely have a sharp angle that I don't love. Uh, do you ever hire someone for certain jobs? Usually no. We do 90 per, probably like 99% of the work ourselves. But I will say you do have to know when to hire and when to DIY. Um, last one room challenge we participated in was the laundry room. And we had to drill through the exterior wall to vent the dryer. And in doing so, we busted out some of the exterior brick. And... We ended up hiring a mason to repair and match the brick just because we were a little out of our league. All right, good question. Um, should a bathroom and laundry room across the hall from each other have the same tile or can they be different? They can definitely be different. I mean, if any room is connected, that's when you might wanna consider a threshold or some sort of transition or keeping it the same. But across the hall, those are totally separate and you can certainly do different tile or flooring. Um, how do you become a renovating, and, a renovating expert or interior designer without an education? I actually do have a design education, so I can't speak as true to this as other people, but I think hands-on experience is invaluable and probably the best thing you can do in terms of learning. So... I would recommend maybe trying to find an internship with a design firm or you know, taking on free projects to just expand your skill set and your portfolio, just experience. Can you mix black and white windows in one house? Yes, we did it at our last house and I'll drop a link in this post so you can see examples. We had, a black, we had black windows in the dining room living room and bathroom and white windows everywhere else. As long as they are aesthetically consistent, yeah, you can totally mix and match color. Um, my hubby and I are also doing a full house reno. How do you balance time for you and him? We're not very good at this, to be honest. When we're doing a project, we're usually honed in on that project and super focused and we want to get it done. There's no like, we don't have free time, to be honest. So. Usually our quality time comes in between projects. So uh, for example, we're currently doing our guest bathroom. As soon as that wraps up in a couple weeks, we have family coming in to visit. We have a birthday trip planned for Emmett. 
and then we'll take a few weeks off to spend time together before jumping into another renovation. Uh, what took your blog to the next level? Did you have a collab or reach a certain milestone? Honestly, no. I feel like collaborations are great, but it's not going to bring you from here to here. It's a slow and steady process, and I firmly believe you get what you put out. So if you're producing quality posts and being honest and authentic and providing people with something that's useful and inspiring and helpful, then that's when you're gonna see slow and steady growth, which is basically what I have seen in my own blog and business. And that's what I prefer, as long as things are on the up and it's even if it's slow, I think that's amazing. What should we use on top of cement board when rehabbing a shower? This is timely because I'm about to do this as soon as I wrap up this video. I need to go paint on a water resistant membrane in the guest bathroom shower. You definitely want to do that. It applies like paint. You just roll it on and it says to only do it on the seams, but we do it all over the entire shower. Basically the cement board in the shower section, everything gets a coat of that and then within 12 hours it cures and it essentially turns to rubber and it can hold water. So don't skip that step, that's important. Is it just you and Emmett running the show over there? How many work on your team? This question always makes me laugh because there is no team, it is just us. We do all of the renovating, I do all of the design and styling and photography and blogging. And we really love what we do, but it is a lot of work since we both have full-time jobs and there is no team, it's just us. Um, I will say, you've probably seen Jacqueline's name on the blog. She'll post two or three times a month, just depends on what she has going on in the season. But with everything, it is hard for me to get five posts in per week. And um, so if I'm running behind, she'll definitely help out. And she's my best friend from Ohio, and she's also been updating her home over the past three or four years. And uh, she's a great asset and comes in so helpful when I need a post. Uh, what are your thoughts on mixing picture frame materials? Brass, black, white, etc. for one room. Yeah, I say do it. I'm all about mixing finishes. Recommended fan sources with ceiling lights. I'm going to link a post because I did a big roundup on these. We, ha we actually had a really great one in our previous bedroom. Any thoughts on renovating an unfinished basement? Yes, I think absolutely renovate if it's going to be a good investment. Meaning, is this space something you could market as livable space when it comes time to sell? A lot of times that depends on the code. So is there an in, a separate entryway or exit? Are the windows large enough to code that it counts as living space? So if that's the case, yes, renovate if it's a smart decision. Or if it's your forever home and you just want more space, then by all means, do it. On the contrary, if you're not going to be there forever and it cannot be counted as livable space, I'd probably use your dollars elsewhere. Um, what are some tips for renovating a small older home? Luckily, I've, we've done a a couple of these and typically small homes lack storage space meaning there aren't very many closets you kind of have an overflow as where do I put this so I would recommend just thinking of maximizing your space in terms of storage so for example in our previous home we didn't have a true dining area and so that's why I created and designed the breakfast nook with the banquette because not only was it great, a great space to sit and have a meal, but the entire banquette underneath was storage. We had doors, uh, pull out drawers, all sorts of space that we could store things behind closed storage. Uh, what are some tips for a tub or shower combo curtain? Do I hang the curtains to the ceiling? Do I use drapery panels or a shower curtain? This is a good question and something I've actually been talking about because 
I am using the same treatment in our guest bathroom that I did in our previous bath. And um, I'm kind of picky about this. I like a shower curtain that barely kisses the floor. It doesn't puddle like drapery would sometimes because that could get gross and moldy and dirty. But um, I like it to sit just like a quarter of an inch above the floor and barely brush the floor. And um, a lot of times this means having a custom shower curtain. And oftentimes I'll just buy drapery panels for the outside and I'll hem those to fit. And then for the interior shower curtain liner, it is sometimes difficult to find one that's long enough. I've had good luck finding these on Amazon and um, those also usually come extra long and then I have to hem them to fit. I'm actually gonna be doing a post on how to do this shower curtain treatment as soon as the guest bathroom wraps up because I didn't do that with our last bath and it's one of my most asked questions. Um, it doesn't matter whether you mount it to a ceiling track like I like to do or just a plain shower rod. That kind of applies to every shower curtain that I like. Um, let's see. What is the best way to personalize a space if you are renting when it's not your style at all? This is tricky because it is hard to look at something day after day when it's not your aesthetic and it's not something you can change, but you can definitely bring in your personality and your style with furniture, artwork, accessories, textiles, and hopefully that will be so bold and representative of your personality that maybe, you know, the outdated cabinetry or flooring isn't as big of a deal because you've made it your own in terms of your furnishings. Can you go into more detail about how your husband smoothed out the ceiling instead of scraping? Yes, so that's in the guest bathroom and it is not a popcorn ceiling. Just to be clear, it's kind of like an orange peel texture and um, at first we thought scraping would be our best bet and then I thought, no, this we're redoing drywall anyway, let's just skim coat it and Emmett agreed so we ended up just taking drywall mud and skim coating it and taping the seams to the new drywall and then sanding everything down to make it totally smooth. Which was quite this process but well worth it because I don't like texture at all and the smooth ceiling looks amazing. So well worth the time and effort and dust in the eyes. Um, what order of rooms or projects would you do in a home reno if you can't afford to do it all at once? This is a great question because I don't know a lot of people who can afford to do it all at once. We can't and we save project by project. If you're not planning to do the entire home, I would think in terms of resale value and where you're going to get your investment back when it comes time to sell. So obviously a kitchen, a bathroom, things like that will give you your return on investment or depending on what rooms you use the most and you just personally want to make better, think about that. So for example, I really want my office done because I work from home and it's just not a very happy space and it's not very functional so I'd like that to be higher on my list just for just from a personal preference you know that's not going to give us the best return on investment as opposed to doing another bathroom or the kitchen but it's just something I really want so I think that's maybe a personal choice but also keeping investment in the back of your brain is never a bad thing is it ideal for crown molding and trim to be consistent throughout every room? Uh, a lot of people would say it's ideal, but it's not necessary. Uh, the millwork in our previous home didn't all match. Everything matched except for the kitchen. We had custom cabinetry and the millwork matched the cabinetry. So um, it's not necessary at all. As long as the styles are complementing each other and it's not, you know, like a uh, very intricate traditional trim with a flat shaker style trim. That doesn't work, but if they are of the same aesthetic, then it's totally fine to mix and match um, in different rooms. In the same room, I would say it all needs to be consistent, but I think that's obvious. All right. Um, have you ever painted cabinetry? Would you recommend it? Is it worth it? Yes, I have painted cabinetry. Yes, it's worth it. 
Yes, you do need a specific type of paint and process to make sure it wears and is durable. I'm going to put a link in this post. Uh, I helped my friends design a kitchen a couple years ago and I helped them paint their cabinetry and it's all Ikea and it's still holding up wonderfully. It still looks beautiful and they definitely saved a lot of money painting it themselves and going that route. So if you're on a budget, yeah, paint those cabinets. Uh, what do you think of luxury vinyl wood flooring? I'm just going to be really honest. I don't like it. <laughs> uh, if you're on a budget and you want budget flooring, maybe look at something different like tile or engineered hardwood, something that has a better resale value, looks more high end, and comes in at that same price point. I just think that Vinyl looks cheap. It's not desirable when it time when it comes time to sell. So, if I'm being 100% honest, I would avoid vinyl anywhere. Uh, what colors look great with navy blue? We're starting our office this week. First of all, I'm jealous. You know, I want that off. <laughs> I want my office. But uh, navy is an amazing color. I almost use it as a neutral because it basically goes with everything. Um, if you want high contrast, obviously black and white looks super classic and timeless with navy. If you want to keep some color in there on the opposite end of the color spectrum and color wheel, um, orange or burnt sienna looks fantastic with navy. Um, if you think about our previous bedroom, which it's still set up like this in our current home, but our bed is a cognac, like orangey color leather, and we have navy nightstands, and I just love that combination together. Should light fixture styles be tied in throughout the home to seem cohesive? Uh, light fixtures don't have to match throughout your entire house as far as like the same fixture, but they do need to feel cohesive in terms of aesthetic. It wouldn't make a ton of sense for me to have a very traditional chandelier and then in the next room have like a really modern like mantis or sputnik mid-century modern chandelier that's where when it doesn't work all right i'm gonna try to hurry but i think we're running out of time here this video is getting long huh? uh okay uh could you post about what type of paint to use furniture paint versus wall paint versus exterior paint um, I've talked about this in the past, so I'll link a couple uh, posts, but there is a specific paint product for every job and project, so you do want to make sure you're getting the right one. Again, I'll link that. Um, tips on elevating builder grade for an industrial condo. Millwork wouldn't match the style. I think you can have millwork in any style of home if you do have an industrial style condo. You wouldn't want a traditional millwork, but you could definitely do a flat shaker style that feels industrial and you can think outside of woodworking. So maybe instead of a piece of trim or wood, you could use an industrial piece of metal like Schluter to finish an edge. Um, are white walls over or what color should I paint my new 1928 year old house? This is a great question. I do not think white is over. It's a classic, bright, crisp color. It will be timeless. However, personally, I'm tired of seeing all white spaces. I think it's getting boring. And I think that color is coming back in a big, big way. So especially in a historic or older home, I vote go for color. Go bold, go with a classic historic color. But to answer the original question, white walls are not over, but I am getting bored with them. So if you want to kind of stand apart from the crowd and really have something unique, I would opt for something other than white. Do you have a dream home or dream design board if you had no budget? No, this is like every designer's dream, right? Like design your dream house with no budget. Ugh. That sounds amazing. I would really love to design a beach house someday, like a little beach cottage. It doesn't have to feel tropical. It could even be in the Pacific Northwest or like along a rocky coast. I don't really care. I just would love to do a beach cottage or like a vacation home or just a little getaway. That's kind of mine and Emmett's dream. We already live in the mountains and we absolutely love it here. 
but to do a beach house is my dream and i do have a pinterest board started so i'll put that in the post as well um where's the best place to start a kitchen renovation cabinetry tile what um when i'm designing an entire kitchen i like to start with cabinetry but i think that's just a personal preference you can really start with anything that inspires you for me i'm inspired by millwork and architecture so the cabinetry door style is kind of my favorite place to start but you could start with the countertop stone you're using or a backsplash tile or a, a vintage textile like a rug you found and you want to pull out some of those colors it's really just uh, your personal process uh, I have a large yard that has a gentle yet significant slope what would you do design wise so that's kind of alarming that it's a significant slope because if you're designing or building a permanent structure like a pergola a paver patio you know something like that a fire pit or seating area you want to make sure that the drainage is adequate and that it's on a flat surface so there's not going to be uh, freezing and thawing and shifting and so if you have a sloped yard and you want to build something permanent I would highly suggest bringing in dirt to level that out before getting started or try to build something on the top end of that slope that can give with the drainage. That's a tricky one. Decorating with wall-to-wall -wall carpet, help. <laughs> this home has 99% carpet, I swear. There's just the tiniest bit of hardwood. Uh, eventually, I plan to update all of the main level with hardwood which we're hoping to start this spring, maybe within the next couple of months, once the bathroom wraps up. But um, I honestly love having carpet in our basement because that's where we lounge, watch TV, and in the upstairs because that's where all of the bedrooms are. And it feels very cozy. And I think when it comes time to replace the carpet that is here, I'll replace it with carpet again because I honestly like it. But um, decorating with it, the carpet is a textile it's fibrous and you want to make sure that that there's not too many fabrics so when you're bringing in upholstery on top of carpet like an upholstered bed you just want to make sure that it feels balanced and cohesive you can also layer with rugs if you want color or pattern or texture or whatever but just make sure it's not a tripping hazard so you want to go for something that's a lower pile uh, tips for first time renovators. I would say just start, just dive in, do your research. It's intimidating at first, but you learn with every project you tackle, you learn and it's just invaluable experience. So just pick a starting point and dive in. That's my recommendation. Uh, I think we're running out of time and I didn't print all of the questions. So let's wrap this up. Uh, last question, um, how long have you and Emmett been together or renovating together? Uh, we have been dating since we were practically babies. We dated all through high school. We went to college together. We got married right after college and we've basically been renovating ever since. We bought our first home not even a year after we were married and, uh, we renovated that home and then ever since then we've I guess we've just taken the renovating route. So we work really well together and uh, I recently posted about five tips for renovating or tackling home projects with your significant other and I feel like it has taken us a while to work this well as a team. It's definitely not always easy but uh, I love what we do and that we do it together and we make so many good memories So I wouldn't change it and I feel super thankful Anyway, um, that's all the questions for now. I will do another Q&A soon if you enjoyed this. I hope so uh, You can always leave comments at the bottom of the blog post and I'll talk to you later